Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Phos Hilaron. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. This evening's first psalm is Psalm 36. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes that his hateful sin will not be found out. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has left off acting wisely and doing good. He thinks up wickedness upon his bed and has set himself in no good way. He does not abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon an abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. 
and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. See how they are fallen, those who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. And this evening's second psalm is Psalm 39. I said, I will keep watch upon my ways so that I do not offend with my tongue. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while the wicked are in my presence. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I refrained from rash words, but my pain became unbearable. My heart was hot within me while I pondered the fire burst into flame. I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days so that I may know how short my life is. You have given me a mere handful of days and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand erect are but a puff of wind. We walk about like a shadow and in vain we are in turmoil. We heap up riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now what is my hope? O oh Lord, my hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. And do not make me the taunt of the fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth. For surely it was you that did it. Take your affliction from me. I am worn down by the blows of your hand. With rebukes for sin you punish us. Like a moth you eat away all that is dear to us. Truly, everyone is but a puff of wind. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am but a sojourner with you, a wayfarer, as all my forebearers were. Turn your gaze from me, that I may be glad again. before I go my way and am no more. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit that benefits repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. When one hears a gospel like this, one may be tempted to sort of be a bit afraid. It sounds very severe and very harsh. 
but we have to remember who it is that John the Baptist is talking about. This one who is coming is Jesus. And he is burning up the chaff in the fire, but he's also igniting our hearts with fire. He is, as John says, baptizing with fire. What is chaff? So if you have a piece of wheat in the ancient world, well, and today if you're a farmer, it is a little tiny edible grain that is surrounded by this little wheat suit of armor. So you have the kernel of wheat, which you can pound into flour and make bread and feed your children, staff of life, everybody lives for another day, and it's surrounded by this inedible, useless husk. And so on a threshing floor, the wheat, this invaluable little tiny unit of life, is separated from this, this um, just hard, useless suit of armor, this inedible chaff, and they are threshed apart. And so the winnowing fork is in his hand, and he's threshing apart this invaluable grain of life from this useless chaff which surrounds it. In one sense, if we think of ourselves as just being pure chaff, then this sounds like a pretty terrifying metaphor. Um, however, if we think about ourselves as like a total piece of wheat, not to say this is absolutely what St. John meant, um, but it's one possibility, certainly, then if we are a mix of this invaluable image and likeness of God and surrounded by this useless suit of armor, this useless suit of pride and arrogance and fear and selfishness, and I can make myself feel better by buying all this stuff. I can make myself feel better by getting this great job. I can make myself feel better by eating the whole gallon of Bluebell at once. All this stuff that we surround ourselves with then when the master comes with his winnowing fork to separate the wheat from the chaff, getting rid of that chaff forever, burning it with unquenchable fire, that actually sounds like the best possible thing that could happen to me. If I were just that germ of wheat, just that, that um, unit of life, just that uh, image and likeness of God without all this other junk that I've piled on top. However, if you are a piece of wheat that's pure chaff, and there is no wheat on the inside, then threshing, and there's, there's nothing to be pulled apart. If you're just chaff, if your life has been consumed by impressing other people and being powerful and being the smartest one in the room and being the most beautiful person and yada, 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 if, if it's all chaff, then what has the master got to gather into his granary? So St. John is yelling, repent, Repent, be that full human that God created you to be. Be the image and likeness of God. Notice the places where you've wandered off the path of your true humanity, where you've wandered off the path that leads to Christ, that looks like Christ, and get back on that path. Repent, because the master is coming. His winnowing fork is in his hand. Make sure there's something there to redeem when he comes. Let us say together the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past, and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I would invite your prayers of petition and thanksgiving.
Almighty God, I pray for all those who are sick or suffering from COVID-19. I pray for the city of Georgetown, that you would keep us safe from this pandemic, for the city of Austin. I pray for the whole state of Texas, for the United States, and for all the nations of the world as we seek to combat this virus. And I pray that you would lift this plague from us. I pray for all those who are now in hospital, in ICU. I pray that you would heal them. I pray for all of the doctors, nurses, and other caregivers who are on the front lines of this battle. I pray for protection and strength for them. I pray for all scientists working on tests and on cures and vaccines. I pray that you would work through them to bring us speedily accurate testing and an effective vaccine against this virus. I pray also for all those who have died. I pray that you would receive them into your heavenly kingdom. I pray for all who have died in this community, especially for Gene Feller, our brother, after his several year battle with illness. I pray that he would rest in peace and rise in glory. Please watch over Grace Church. Please keep us united in prayer, although we are physically distant. I pray for all those who are anxious or lonely during this time. Please help them to know that you are in isolation with them. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. God bless you and have a good evening.